Well, we've got some news. I'm here. Wide awake. <laughs> Tell me. We got her. The survivor, she's pulled through. She's being brought down now. <gasps> oh, good. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. On my previous video, we've got a new suspect. The survivor. Yeah! Can't wait to ask her about everything. Let's watch her first video. Suspect Heather Gardner. Alright, go ahead and make yourself comfortable. Uh, let us know if we can get you anything. Um, there's coffee, water, um, something here on the table for you already. We really appreciate you coming down here um, before you leave town with your parents. Uh, we understand you want to go back home and receive care there. Sounds like this is your last stop before leaving. I just want you to find out who did this and to feel safe again. Well, you're safe in here now. Again, we really appreciate you coming right from the hospital and that you feel strong enough to do this so soon. We have all the equipment set up for you to tell us what happened, so we'll ask a couple questions and then we'll get you on your way. So please, you're comfortable as much as possible? Okay. Let us know if you need to take any breaks or in pain at any time. So tell us, what happened two nights ago? You mentioned wanting to find out what happened to your friends. You don't know? Take us back first. What happened all of last week? You arrived in town then, right? I wonder why she was also a suspect. A week ago we were finishing up finals. Brian and Alana have been talking about wanting to get a place for the summer and asked if I wanted to come along. It sounded better than being bored all summer down south again. And they said Emily and Greg were in already, too. This is before we even knew about staying at Alana's. Emily and Greg were just up for doing it. That's what I love. Loved about them. We finished up our finals, packed up some stuff, and then came out here. Alana said her parents usually left the keys in the mailbox. It was her family's summer cottage they owned. She had been coming up here ever since she was young. We were just looking for a place to stay for the summer. Away from school, home, people we knew, where we could just let loose and have fun. We heard the town at a couple of bars and miles of beaches along the water. That's all we wanted. It was going to be really fun. Okay. So we got here. The keys were right where Alana said they would be, and we moved in. We didn't have a lot of stuff. Figured we could get most of it out here. The house itself seemed really old. Kind of sad in a way, or creepy. Overgrown and dead plants. Peeling paint. I guess they didn't take care of it too much. There were no modern plugs in the place, just the two pieces kind. And all the light switches were the old push button style too, you know. No Wi-Fi or any other modern conveniences. We were going to have to use data for our phones all summer or go to a coffee shop, which was going to be fine. It wasn't costing us much after all. No Wi-Fi, guys. Last week was fun for the most part. We go to beaches during the day, went kayaking, hiking in the woods. I looked at a couple places to get a job, too, and then we went to that stupid rock thing. I think Brian and Greg jumped off of it. They kept trying to get a picture just at the right moment when they were jumping. Thought it would be funny, one of those pictures. <laughs> then at night we'd have fun, too. Go to bars or just stay at home. And then that night happened. I can't believe it was only two nights ago. It seems like it was longer now. You've been through a lot. It was just another normal night for the most part. We went to the bar downtown after stopping by the festival. I think the bar is called The Lantern. We had never been there before. They had some group playing with a female singer who was really good. Not really my type of music, though. So we stayed there for a while. Emily and Greg wanted to stay out and go somewhere else. But it was past one and the last call was coming up. Plus it was pouring out, so we decided to head home and hang out there. It's not a far walk from downtown. So we came home and played some cards. At around 2 to 2.30, things were winding down. Alana said she was going to bed, and the rest of us were still up listening to music and playing cards. So we're all talking, playing cards, and we look over, and this guy has just seemingly appeared in the doorway to our room. We didn't hear a knock, didn't hear the front door open. He was just there. He didn't say anything. He just stood there. We were all kind of quiet when we saw him, just totally unexpected. Immediately, the guys got up and asked if he was lost, and Brian said that he had to leave. Greg was kind of drunk and rude to him, threatening him a little. We shooed him away out the front door, and he walked down the sidewalk and out into the rain. We were all kind of shaken up somehow. I guess it just surprised us. 
We thought we must have left the door open or unlocked if you wanted a place to stay. I think we had all had enough then and decided to call it a night. We all went our separate ways and were going to bed. <sighs> but he must have come back after that. Around 3.30 or 4. Yeah, at 4 a.m. things got really hectic. What happened? Okay. Keyword, lock. You ever been up to the hill, the state park? Yeah, like I said, we went up there a couple of days ago, last week. Emily and Alana and the guys really wanted to go. The guys jumped off of it and Brian actually kind of hurt his leg when he landed and vowed to get revenge on it. It was pretty funny. <laughs> said he wanted to come back and push it over. Emily and Alana wanted to see it too. I thought it was amazing, not what I was expecting. The site? The rock? Yeah, it's a beautiful location. And the most beautiful I've ever seen with the water and the hill. Did you happen to go up there for the bonfire later? Where they light the statue up? When they burnt the big straw man? No. We watched it from outside the bar. Everyone was cheering when it went up. But it's not really our thing, so we stayed downtown. A lot had been up there before. Did you guys do anything else during the festival? Mm, the guys did one of the shooting galleries. We shared an elephant ear. We also tried to guess what was in the bowls and the boxes. You know, the ones where they cover the boxes and they have spaghetti for intestines, peeled grapes for eyeballs, that sort of thing. That must have seemed pretty tame, comparatively. Yeah, the whole thing seemed like it was more for kids and families. I know, my family loves the Festival of Fire. Alright, let's move on. Festival <coughs> of Fire. Note. Now the keyword, singer. I don't think I have any enemies. And the others? I'm not sure. They were all really good people. We had the best year of our lives this year. We were going to graduate next year and we were so excited. You sure? About the enemies? No one mentioned any problems recently? We've been trying to help you out and have been interviewing locals, suspects, and other people yesterday and today. Your friends. Did they have good families? Awkward gesture. Keyword. Festival of Fire, of course. What all goes on at the Festival of Fire that you've been to? The cops. You guys patrol it. You know. That wasn't where I was going with my question. We're aware of the event. Well, away from the fun and games, there are some places in town that celebrate in different ways. How so? People think it's the night to do stuff, try stuff. One night of the year. What do you mean, like drugs? No, I mean that too, kind of, but that's not what I meant. What do you mean? They try stuff. They're more open to stuff. Having fun and serious stuff, like witchcraft. Witchcraft? Yeah, like spells and stuff. It's kind of what this town is known for, you know. Really? That's what the town is known for now? Partially, yeah. It's getting weird. The Festival of Fire, my favorite. The West Coast's finest come from miles around and descend on the town like locusts. Look, I get it. People like to dress up and play make-believe. But there's a time and a place that's called childhood. My big problem with it is all of my neighbors who act normal 364 days of the year, but then come out and act like some big blessing on the town that must be revered. You already get Halloween the next day, so do we really need to drag this out for another day? Pop on your broomsticks and... Ah, yes. The Festival of Fire. It used to just be called the Fire on the Hill. Not such a big production. For most people now, it's bobbing for apples, dressing up in tacky Halloween costumes. All capped off with a big phony baloney festival on top of the Witch's Hill at Dangling Rock, where they light some fake effigy to whatever on fire that the town put together over a few weeks. A real family affair. The town council even helps put it together now, I think. And some big companies even sponsor part of it. It brings in a lot of money. Mmm, yes. What with the families having a fun night out, the drunken revelers, and even the kids with their internet spells. It's an eventful night. What's different now is that the festival takes place on the same date every year. Now, October 30th, Devil's Night, or Mischief Night in some places. 
But originally it was only supposed to take place only on the date in October when the moon was right. Well, what do you mean by that? Why is that important? The festival right now is always on the 30th, the day before Halloween, for convenience. But before, the moon was always supposed to be in shadow for this event. Well, with the significance being... It helps to perform an incantation or a spell when the moon is at its extremes or strongest. This goes back way before my time, so I'm not sure on the exact history. But I know the moon doesn't show up because it's in shadow and looks black. So we can't see it? No, you can't, no. But it's still there, obviously. Eclipse, you mean? But every year? Is there anything else you remember at the bar? Like what you had to drink? Did anybody get food? Uh, no, just that the drinks were red. I do remember that uh, for the fire festival thingy. Good? Not especially. Kind of weird. I mean, okay, nothing special. Hmm. Okay, thanks. I guess we can double check on that. Toxicology in the bodies would have brought something up. True. But no, no one ate anything, that's for sure. We were still pretty full from dinner. We had burgers downtown. Where was that at? Uh, Barbecue Depot, I think. All right, thanks. We'll take note of that. Let's try four. Fort Corden, such a big fort. One of the biggest of its kind. It was only built relatively recently. As well, at the turn, apparently built to protect the coast. Not sure from whom, though, at that time. Sure who they were so afraid of. Do you know? I don't. Do you, Mike? Now, the official line was that it was for coastal defense. I'm not so sure. We can be so afraid of our own shadows sometimes instead of embracing them. And then, what? It became a facility, a prison for children. Oh, excuse me. A rehabilitation center for troubled youth. 17 and under. And a few escaped, never to be heard from again. All the while, we now know the military never left and that they kept the cistern underneath. Dreamed. <laughs> Who knows what they were doing down there. This is Fort Corton. Seems small and uncomfortable. Children prison, eh? Hey, who's this? How he or she get into these messages? Let's try Bergstrom. Natalie. Natalie sounds familiar, but no. Interesting. What was your relationship like with the Morgans? Oh, I was close to the parents. Craig's parents. Alana's grandparents. Mm -hmm. Before they passed on. I get along great with Craig and Alana and his current wife. Um, current wife? Claire? Oh, thanks. Yeah, they're fine. They come and stay for a weekend or week here and there. And that's about it. It's their vacation home now. Their main residence is back in the city. But I'm not sure how often they'll come here in the future. I couldn't imagine living in a place where something like that happened to my family. Yes, that. And they had been fighting recently also. Things weren't going well with them. No, sadly not. Anything you can help us with? Well, I'm not one to gossip. But that hussy down the block seemed to spend an awful amount of time there when Mrs. Morgan was away. <laughs> so you think they were, um, commingling? Perhaps. And this is, uh, who? Natalie Bergstrom, your neighbor. Yes, we go way back. So, you do know. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, we, uh, we hear things, time to time. Uh, you know, our families were good friends in the past. First ones on the land. But only she survived and... Everyone in the neighborhood knows what she gets up to. Her husband died and left her 
considerably more well off. So she thinks she can do as she pleases. I tried to stay away from all the details, but I know how people like to gossip. Well, uh, let's see if we can uh, get someone to find Natalie Bergstrom. Hmm? Might have some additional info. Commingling, eh? Another person of interest. Natalie Bergstrom. Okay, folks, that's it for today. Inshallah, I'll see you in my next video. Stay healthy always. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum.